Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we are back working on our composition book art journal. I'm going to give you more tips, things I've changed, we're going to add some layers, and we're going to make the cover. So I rethought my thought about gluing the pages together. I noticed that the pages were a little thin and that was a little bit troublesome. So I am going to glue some of the pages together. But before I do that, I am going to take a suggestion offered up by one of my subscribers to remove some of the pages from the center. So I found where the stitching was. Now, what I'm going to do is remove 20 pages or so. Now, you have to do this carefully one page at a time. Don't put them together like this and yank because you're going to pull out those threads. Remember, this is a cheapy book. This isn't going to stand up to a lot of rough roughness. So I'm ripping off one page like this and then pulling this off carefully, trying very dip hard not to disturb the stitching. Now, don't worry about these pages. We are going to use them. They will not be discarded. So I'm gluing the pages together and I'm going back to some of these pages from the front. I can't double up on some of them, but some of them I can. So I'm putting a layer of Elmer's glue stick. I did not try dollar store glue. Um, I have good success with the Elmer's. You want to make sure that all the ends get done. And I kind of perfect this and I put on both sides. I find it gives a good adhesion. You don't want to skimp fold it over and I'm using the bone folder on the one side to press it down and make good contact and then press it on the other side. I find this minimizes the ring, the, the crinkles and you can just grab a baby wipe to keep the glue off your fingers. So I'm doing a few of the pages in this session because I want to see how once they completely dry, if they're staying together, I'm still not convinced at this point that gluing all the pages together is the right answer for me. So I'm testing the waters, doing a few and going to see, but this is my preferred way to doing it. And you can see how the book is bulking up a little bit. Now, after I glue the pages on, I the next step, just to recap, is to gesso on the pages. And it was easier to gesso the two glued pages together and going this way as opposed to top down. And I've taped off the top part just to keep things neat and tidy. So between gluing the pages down and the coat of gesso, the pages become quite substantial and I'm happy with the weight of them. I'm taking off the tape by heating it. That helps to not remove some of the paper and rip the page. Otherwise, they really do rip these thin pages. Don't worry, I'm not going to be showing too much more of this gesso. You can watch the first video. I will put a link to it in the iCards in the top right hand corner and you can get all the helpful tips and tricks. But I wanted to bring you, you know, what I'm changing as I learn. So those pages that we took out, I'm just going to show you what I've done with them. I have some leftover pieces from my recent Stamperia Live. That's what you see. And I've cut that down and I'm going to turn it into a mini book cover. So I'm just cutting the pages that I took out of this, this notebook to size. No measurements here. I'm just testing it and getting the perfect size so that it fits nicely inside these little mini books. And I have lots of these background papers, so I'll be making lots of these books. Now, opening it up, this is cardboard underneath. I'm putting the pages on, and then I'm going to put a staple through the middle of the spine to keep the pages in place. I just inked it so that you could see where I'm putting it. There's the staple, it's straight, and I'm just bending it down with my palette knives. Now 
I do trim the corners with my corner trimmer here. I'll do a full video on making these books or similar books in somewhat in the near future. I'm inking it and I apologize this is off screen. And here are a couple of the books that I made with the papers. These are using Stamperia Collection Patchwork Christmas. Now here are some leftovers from those master boards that I used. And of course, they could otherwise be discarded, but I am going to put them into this Making Marvelous out of the discarded art journal. So I'm going to glue them down on this page. So I flip through the pages and decide which one I'm going to add it to. Now, when I'm adding to these pages at this stage, I'm not doing a whole lot of thinking. I'm trying to go fairly quickly. Now, sometimes you're gonna love what you do, what you add, and sometimes you're not but we're going to be adding more layers. And you can always undo what you've done with a coat of gesso, so don't worry. And realize this is the art journal to play, to explore, to use up bits of things, and maybe make some discoveries. I'm just gluing this down with matte medium. This is adding texture to this background. It's just that next layer. The thing I love about this accidental journal is these pages are going to evolve over time and you're going to get something that you wouldn't otherwise get. Now, this was another day. I was doing some Christmas projects <clears throat> videos and I had leftover paint. So I grabbed my accidental art journal and I'm going to use that leftover paint to add to some of these pages. So here I'm adding quinacridone magenta to to this same page that we just added that and instantly and here I'm adding the blue and I'm loving the combination of these colors. That Naples yellow from that glued on texture, the pink and the blue, completely loving it at this stage. And that's an accidental, oops, wonderful thing that happens. And now I, now that I see these three colors together, this is something I can now take to doing an art journal page on purpose. And what I would do is write this on the back of this page Try this color combo. Loving these colors. If you remember that, put it down now because over time you're not going to necessarily remember exactly what colors they were. Now, remember, these pages are, are evolving rather quickly in my book. I'm making art journal pages or some project every second day, sometimes every day. So I'm making a lot, so there's a lot of leftovers. If you're not creating as much as that, it's going to take more time for your pages to evolve. Adding some orange on top of here, some pattern. Not loving this page at this stage. Now the stencils that I'm grabbing are what's on my desk. They are ones that I've used in some projects and, and art journal tutorials that I've just recently done, and they just haven't made it back into the stash. And that's what I'm grabbing. So there's a randomness with that. This page I absolutely hate. We started with smooshing. I added the tissue paper. The colors work, but... And then I add some red with my homemade stencil here and suddenly it's turning. So that's what I mean. As you evolve these pages, as you add to the pages, it will go through that ugly stage and then it'll 
transform. I'm adding some white with the circles as well. Suddenly I'm liking this a little bit better because it's not back what was there. Now this page is orange and so I'm going to go with the green family or more specifically I'm, I'm using bright aqua and I'm using a complementary color and that's going to give it a lot of energy. And this is an X Trails stencil. You want to add pattern to your background's texture, either visual or physical. Contrast. You're going to see me adding lots of black and white to some of these backgrounds. Just flipping through the pages, seeing, okay, what color do I have? What will, what will work? I use this punch card and I'm using the same colors. I got a very little bit of this on my palette. I ended up using every little bit of paint that I had left over by adding it to these pages. There's Here I had some white or white gesso. I brayered it onto the stamp and I'm just stamping, adding some more detail into the background. Grab this tiny dots stencil, adding some white dots. At some point, these pages are going to say, okay, you know where this goes, you can finish it. And I'll show those too. So I did end up gluing all the pages together. I liked how it felt. They stayed together when I added more medium. You can see how the book is thickened up once all the pages are doubled up. I did leave a few pages at the end to brainstorm ideas to use in this book. Now, this came off, and it's plastic. This book came from Walmart, this pen and gear. It's plastic. Some are cloth, and I would search out the ones with cloth. Now, I used up all my glue stick, but in the spirit of using things that are discarded, I'm going to save this cap. It's going to be a mark-making tool. So I did... So now these pages are ready and I'll do a session of brayering gesso on them at different times or when I have extra gesso on my palette. So I'm continuing. I'm going to do the cover out of the discarded and the discarded is also things that you have in your stash that you've forgotten about. Here is sticker paper that I had put through the printer. I printed something incorrectly. So instead of throwing this in the garbage, I am going to use it. Now I'm not worried that it has this text on it because either that's just going to add some interest to the background or with the layers that I'm going to put on here, we'll knock it back. Now the first one I showed you, I only had one and for the cover, I want to do the front and the back. So I'm going to try to create that again. And I didn't get exactly the right thing. So here I'm using the Amsterdam bluish green and I'm brayering in both directions, up and down, sideways. <clears throat> and now I'm going to brayer some gesso or white on this. Because this is a little dark and I'm looking at the original, the other one that I made, and it's much lighter. So I'm thinking it was just a layer of white that I needed to add it. This is adding some texture to it. And you can go back and forth, brayering on more color and more white till you get the color that you like. Now, in a perfect world, I would make these at the same time and it would be identical. But remember, we're making it out of the discarded and making do with what we have. When I add to these pages, I want to use things that I have in my stash or things that would otherwise be going into the trash. And if you're not using it, you know, we make things in our stash, we create fodder and we need to use it. 
This is Starflower Net Stencil, and I'm stenciling with the blue-green. I'm going to add those layers of interest to my background. This is something Mandela. I'll put the names in the description box. They are the new um, winter 2021 stencils from the Crafters Workshop. They are available at TCW, their Shopify store. And there is a discount code in the description box. But they should be available in Amazon as well if you go through my Amazon link. Usually about six months after a release, they start getting posted there at a reasonable price. So now I want to add that yellow. And yellow works with the blue. It's a complementary color. So while I'm calling this an accidental art journal page, you're using the knowledge that you have to guide those happy accidents. Use your color theory. Use what you know. And then experiment. So it's not necessarily random. At the end, I will be showing a flip through of where all these pages are at this stage. And I've only had this journal. I'm using some leftover paint, or actually here I'm not using leftover paint. I will be using this leftover paint in a minute. I'm splattering with white. And then I splatter with gold to bring out that yellow and add some shimmer and shine and extra specialness to my journal covers. Now, when you splatter, it takes time to dry. So I'm using up the leftover paint here, that Prussian blue that I use on the cover. I just flip through my journal pages. Where can I add it? Where can I add it? Had a little bit of that Naples yellow and I loved it here. So I'm adding a little bit more. Now you want to keep your journal open until page is dry because they do stick together if you don't. So I do open it up to, to that page and let it dry properly with the heat tool. You don't want to close the book and have your pages stick together because they will rip. Now this page I did not like, so I'm going to knock back some of this stuff by applying. I have some gesso that was left over. I'm just going to apply some gesso. It's going to take the paint. It's going to allow for paint to, and medium to take it. It's going to bring out some of that texture from gluing down that napkin. And at the end, I don't, I like it better <coughs> than it was. Here I put that teal color on with my finger. I just finger painted the dots. Not something I normally do, but remember, this journal is use, use those techniques that you don't normally do. I made a Christmas gift and I used some modeling paste, had some left over. So I'm just using it and applying it to a page here. Now this has to be set aside to dry. So once it dried, now what you're seeing in this video, many times, it, this is over several days. Now I showed you the spine there. You can see the white string. So you absolutely need to cover that spine or you will catch it and rip it and cause problem. Your journal will fall apart. So... I'm outlining this, I'm not measuring, 
drawing a line, I'm giving a little bit of excess so I don't have to make it exact because if I try to make it exact, I find I'm short and then I'm cutting off that excess. I'm peeling off the backing and covering my book. Now this is very sticky paper, the one that I link to in the description box. If you buy what I have, it's very sticky. So you only really get one chance. You really can't pull it off. And I put it on. I do a better job with the background and I use the bone folder to press it on and make good contact. And then I'm cutting off the excess, which is sticky. So it's a bit finicky to cut off, but persist. I heard you can get scissors that don't stick. So I would need to go do a search on those. Might be worth the investment. Because I love, love, love using this peel and stick papers, master boards on here. So if I put the spine back on the black, I'm gonna, I love the way it looks, using the bone folder to make sure I've got great contact and smooth out any wrinkles. So let's do the back. Now this one's cut, so I'm gonna have to work around that. So again, we are going to not measure, we're just going to put it up here, give us a little bit of a line, make it fit. So whatever color your or whatever size your journal is, you can do the same. Giving a little bit of excess, cutting these off. And yes, those little bits of peel and stick, I am not throwing them out. They may end up in this accidental journal or they may end up on another art journal page with another purpose. So there they are. So peel it off, line up on one edge, drop it down on just that edge, lift it up, drop that down, and then press forward. This one was perfect. I got no wrinkles, use the bone folder, Now this part here, I just thought I would cover that up. I wasn't sure I was going to find, be successful gluing that black down and I didn't want that exposed thread. So I was putting this down. If you do this with the peel and stick, I think it would work. I would just cut a thicker strip. This was very narrow and I do end up putting the spine, the black spine back on, figuring out a way of getting that to work. but I think the peel and stick would work. If you have another idea for recreating something to cover the spine, let me know in the comment section. So I'm just putting this down, getting a good adhesion. Now it's a little sticky where there's some, and I saw on a video where someone used a light sanding foam, which is what you see me using here, and I just sanded it up and worked like a darn. That was awesome. It just took off the little extra paper and the stickiness on here. And you don't have to apply much pressure at all. Just be careful you don't rip the page. Love the feel of this peel and stick. This will be my go-to way of covering art journal paper, art journals and everything is so easy. Create on these sticker papers. I'll put a link to the video where I create master boards using that. Now I'm going to treat the cover like it's an art journal page. So part of that is edging it in black and I'm putting black acrylic paint on my Ranger blending foam. And just bordering it on black. And remember, I'm going to add the black to the spine back. So the black is going to work together. The rolls will be black in the sentiment that I put on as well. Now this composition book, the inside cover is completely blank. Some of them have like schedules and stuff. You may want to cover that up and you can use the peel and stick to do that. 
So I'm going to attempt to glue this down. Now I already had attempted it using a lean sticky glue and it came right off. So I'm using this E600 glue, which smells and I don't like it for that, but it worked. I, a couple days went by before I'm making this video, um, editing the video, and it totally works. So I put it in. I'm using a baby wipe to remove any of the excess. I guess you could cut material and make this make a spine with that. But I will be looking for a different brand. I'll go into this Dollar Tree or Dollar Store and see if they don't have the composition books that have ones that have material. My mini ones are not this plastic. So I'll be looking for them and giving them a try. So if you have experience with that, let me know if you find some with more material. Now remember that cap from the glue. I've got black acrylic paint and I'm using it as a mark maker. We're using the discarded to make something marvelous. Now we have circles that I stamped with the Prussian blue and this just adds to it. It also adds more black to my background and makes it really pop. So I've got all sorts of caps and lids and sizes that I can do the same with. So now I'm going to work on the focal image for the cover and I use this Julie Nutting doll. Now this was in my stash and while it's not discarded, it is also something that I've spent time with and I need to use it. That's why I created it. So that's part of this journal. Use what you have instead of restamping something new. So I'm painting it out. I'm picking the dress. I'm liking the red one. It really pops on that background. But I like the yellow. So I'm going to paint the girl's hair yellow and that's going to match the yellow that's in the background. Remember, you want everything to work together. See how the hair pops with the gold that's splattered in the back and the yellow stenciling? Now I just want to paint her headband that same color as her dress. And I just mixed red and orange to get that color with a little bit of white. Now I did not allow time for that glue to dry. That's why I've got the bullet clips on. Bulldog clips on there, but in a perfect situation, not making a video, let it dry before you start moving it. Gluing everything down with some fluid matte medium or gel medium, matte finish. I don't want the shine here. And then I'm coming in and using the floating acrylic shading technique, using brown and black to just bring out the focal image, add some more interest. I'm thinking of doing some lives um, in Facebook and YouTube with building on this accidental art journal, this Making Marvelous. If that's something you would like to join me in and are interested in, let me know in the comment section. But I will update you regardless if it's alive or otherwise on how my I find working in this art journal. I outline the girl with that Posca pen as well as the journal. 
love the feel of this. The, the binding on the spine stuck after several days, so yay. And let's do a flip through to see where the pages are. So we've got texture paste on this and stenciling in black and white. One day it'll get some color. This one using those complementary colors in there. Really popped. This needs, in my mind, it needs some contrast, some black or white. Loving this stencil. Great place to use to test out stencils and combinations. This one also needs some color. Now some of these pages are single. Here I'm writing down what I've used and the techniques. And if you're learning, I highly recommend doing that. Remember, use your art journal, this art journal, as a place to try out new color schemes. Do something unexpected. Do something you don't like or, do, or have forgotten. Here, talking about don't like, it kind of got muddy, so I'll probably stick a focal image. Love the feel of this page. Very vintage. Now, at some point, these pages are going to say, okay, we're pretty much done. I love where it is. Add a focal image. So I will wait and maybe do two or three at a time. And then I'll share that with you. Love the icy feel of this one. This one started with that gesso scraped on with a palette knife. Love the look of this. This texture is here. That I love how the punch card stencil is matching the texture in the bindings that I put there. That was an accident. I didn't plan that, but I will bring it out. I take time every once in a while and flip through and see if I've got ideas for what I need to add. This page really didn't like it, but when I added this black through this pine cone stencil, it really came to life. <clears throat> Still not sure where it's going to go, but an unconventional a color scheme I don't normally use, but I'm loving. Here's one again, another color scheme that I don't. Yellow and red don't make it a lot onto my pages. Here it's front and center, and I'm really liking that. Here we've already got a kind of a focal image. Not sure where I want to go. Maybe some contrast with black. This page, I can now move forward with it. I don't dislike it as much as I did before. And you're going to see that with your pages. They will evolve. Love the circles of this. And it's like these pieces were deliberately chosen to go together. And really, they were just pieces that I had. Here I have this silver modeling paste. So we've got some shimmer onto this page. Loving the, yeah, the pink and the blue with the silver. And those are about 17 pages that I have. I can start new pages at, if I've got different colors and I'll be working on finishing these up. Give me a thumbs up, share your thoughts, start your own accidental art journal. Go make marvelous out of your discarded. Until next time, go get creative.